got another video for the A-level chemistry multiple choice practice. So this is the sixth one for inorganic and physical chemistry. Remember, there's a separate playlist for the organic chemistry questions. I hope you like the video. If you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So we've got a mixture of chloride, bromide, and iodide ions. Obviously, the silver nitrate is going to make silver chloride, bromide, and iodide. But because it's dilute ammonia that's gone in next, only the silver chloride dissolves. So what's going to be left on the filter paper? Mixture of silver bromide and silver iodide. So it was option D. Number two, the important thing to appreciate is that volume is proportional to moles. So if we've got 20 cm cubed nitrogen, 10 cm cubed oxygen and 20 cm cubed gaseous product, basically in terms of moles, we've got two to one to two. So which equation's got that ratio? It's C. Moving on to number three. So this is a reverse empirical formula question. So we've got the mass of X and we're told it makes 0.79 grams of oxide. So the difference between those two numbers is obviously the oxygen that's gone in. So the first thing we can do is divide by the MR of oxygen, which is 16. That'll give us the moles of O, so that's 0.0156. And then we'll apply the ratio. So to get the moles of um, X, we need to multiply by two over three. That gives 0 0.0104. And then to get the MR of X, we go mass of X over moles of X, and we get 52.1, which is chromium. So it was option B. Moving on to four, so the first thing we can do is calculate the moles of the MnO4 minus ion, just concentration times volume in decimeters cubed. We get 2.75 times 10 to the minus three, and then we just apply the ratio. So the moles of hydrogen peroxide is gonna be five over two times the moles of MnO4 minus, so we get that number there. And then the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide is the moles of that divided by its volume, 0.275, so option C. Moving on to number five, so we've got the mass of four molecules, so if we divide that by four, we get the mass of one molecule, and now all we need to do is multiply that by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and you get 31.98, which is virtually 32, so it was O2, so B. Moving on to number six, so the formula unit is C18Fe7N18, so the fact that there's 18 Ns means there's 18 of those Cn minus ions. So basically we need an 18 plus charge from the ions. So we just need to see what combination of ion ions is gonna give us 18 plus. So there's all the answers and obviously B must be the right answer because that's the 18 plus charge. Moving on to number seven, so we've got a table full of bond enthalpies and we've got to calculate an enthalpy change. So I call this an in minus out calculation. I'll explain that in a second. The first thing though to appreciate is we don't need all of the bonds in the table. So I think the example has been a bit naughty here. So we don't need the CC single bond. That bond's not involved in this reaction. Nor is the CO single no is the OO single, so we can forget about those. So what do I mean by in minus out? So the delta H, the enthalpy change for the reaction, is calculated by calculating the sum of the energy that has to go in to break all the bonds in the reactants, and then you subtract from that the energy you get out when you make the bonds in the products. So there's the numbers in the formula there, and when you put the numbers in your calculator, you should have got option A, minus 730. Number eight is using a formula that's very, very rarely used. I think I see hardly any questions um, asking this, but the rate constant for a first order reaction can be calculated by doing the lin of two divided by the half life. So that would be lin two over 80, which comes out at 8.66 times 10 to the minus three, so the answer was A. Number nine's testing our knowledge of the definition for standard enthalpy change of atomization. 
So it's the enthalpy change when one mole of gaseous atoms forms from the element in its standard state. So straight away we can rule out B and D because two moles of uh, gaseous atoms are formed in those equations. So we're down to A and C. The other thing it's testing is do we know the standard state of bromine? It is a liquid, so A was the answer. Moving on to 10, I've drawn a sort of schematic for the condensation of ammonia. So if we think about um, in the gaseous form, it's got more energy than in the liquid form. So when you condense something, energy is going to be lost, released. So this is an exothermic process. So the delta H for that would be negative. And then we think, if you think about the amount of disorder, there's more disorder in the gaseous um, ammonia than the liquid ammonia. So the entropy is decreasing as well. So option A is the answer. Number 11, so when you add the sodium hydroxide, the H plus ions are going to be removed. And so the equilibrium is going to move over to the right hand side. So it's going to stay yellow. So D was the answer. Moving on to 12, so there's the reaction for the acid base equilibrium uh, involving ammonia and water. So acids are proton donors. So which species are the proton donors? Well, you can see that on the left hand side, the H2O has donated a proton to the ammonia. So that's the acid on the left. And on the right hand side, this ammonium ion is the proton donor because it's donating a proton to the OH minus ion and becoming ammonium in the process. So the two acids are H2O and NH4 plus. So option C. Moving on to number 13. So you'll notice I've numbered the systems one and two. So basically what we need to do is we need to see how do we combine these two half equations to generate this one. And then whatever we do, we do to the electrode potentials and that will get us the, um, the voltage for that reaction. So you'll notice that the Cr2 plus ions exist in system two. We want them on the left hand side of the equation but they're on the right hand side of the equation in system two. So the way we deal with that is we subtract equation two and you'll see that chromium solid lives in system one, equation one, and it's on the correct side of the equation. So we basically just keep that as it is. So we add equation one. So when you do that, you get this. And then if you notice, you can cancel out the chromium three plus ions and you can get rid of that electron and that'll go down to two. So you've actually made the equation um, in the question. So we just need to do that to the electrode potentials. So there's the same thing, but with the voltages in and you get minus 0 0.32 volts as an answer. So the answer was A. Number 14. So first thing we need to do is where what the single products are for the three equations. And then we can see which ones are nonpolar. So 2CO plus O2 is going to make 2CO2. Si plus 2Cl2 is going to make SiCl4 and S plus 3F2s will give SF6. So non-polar molecules, carbon dioxide, yep, that's non-polar. Silicon tetrachloride, yep, that's also non-polar. SF6, also non-polar, so all three non-polar. A is the answer. And finally, number 15. So the first thing I've done is written down the, the, the last part of the electron configurations of the atoms. So if we think about which electrons are lost to form these ions, to get the Mn3 plus ion, we're going to lose the 4s2 electrons first. Remember, they go first, and one of those 3d electrons, so it goes to 3d4. V3 plus, we're going to lose 4s2, then one of the 3d3s, so we go down to 3d2. And copper 1 plus, remember, is the, one of the weird transition elements. It doesn't have that the sort of traditional... Um, 4s2 configuration so 3d10 4s1 for the atom so 3d10 for the 1 plus ion you probably don't need this but to help visualize the 3d electrons see if they're unpaired or not you have put the electrons in box version so you can see mn3 plus does have unpaired electrons so does v3 plus but cu1 plus doesn't so one and two only b